welcome to the ASMR episode. Uh, I did not God. expect you to start with that. That's exactly what we're doing. Welcome. To, we are the casting. I'm totally off. What are we? What are <laughs> Chad, we doing? Chad, welcome to the wait, cast. Really quick, Chad. Can you do us an ASMR time for death metal? I'm trying to think how to do the boom sound quietly. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> what I thought of you. Fuck you. Um, it's time for death <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Anyways, yeah. Uh, welcome everything. to the Death Battle cast. We are the cast and crew of Death Battle, and we have a special guest today. Yeah. Hello. Writer of the show, Genevieve. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Genevieve. I yeah. wrote things. You did. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Um, well done. I'm Ben, the voice of Wiz. I'm uh, Sam. <laughs> I'm Chad. I play Boomstick. Sam's also a writer and producer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or something. I don't know. We, we make it up as a coffee go. boy today, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, coffee. It's water. Oh, it's deceiving. It's in a coffee cup. Yeah, I know. I'm describing this for the audio listeners. This is a weird fucking cast again. <laughs> it's because yeah. we're all tired from RTX. Dude. That is true. Woo! That is yeah. very true. It was. Uh, a, it was a time. I feel like I might be getting a little bit of that concrete. I got like the uh, tiny scratch throat, mm-hmm. but like I feel okay. But it's so like we're right in a tiny, a, a tiny little set. Let me cough towards all of y'all. Take some airborne first, dude. <laughs> <laughs> airborne. Uh, I don't know if I believe in the vitamin C. <laughs> <laughs> I don't what? believe in vitamin C. Well, to the extent, I don't think slamming that much vitamin C is really going to be, or at least, especially like if you're already feeling symptoms, I don't know if it's gonna like. Oh, it seriously the helps process. though. Like it, it just boosts your immune system a little bit. You can feel it though. Like I think I had maybe strep or something again, and I was just kind of like, all right, vitamin, like let's airborne it up, and I felt a lot better. I think we need scientists. <laughs> Uh, dude, just get my I, mom on the podcast, and then she'll just start busting out every vitamin and pill under the sun. <laughs> just like, oh, like, that's a lot dude, of like, oh my God. solutions. I, oh, though. they are. It, like, yeah, I go out yeah. of my way to like not mention that I'm sick to my mother because she'll be like, "Okay, so you need to go to the store and you need to get the wellness vitamins, and then also make sure every day, every night before you go to sleep, you should be drinking this elderberry syrup and like just go uh, fucking crazy." Wait, do you need some mugwort? Like, I have mugwort. <laughs> well, I don't speak, know. Is that, that is. like some Harry Potter beverage? That's what it's it's actual herb. About? It's like an old herb for like health and stuff. It does. It yeah. does sound yeah. like some it's Harry Potter. It's fucking Western thing. medicine. Like I take a Mugwort multivitamin and Western. shit. Well, Whatever. okay. Speaking of wellness and things that help one. you, thank you to our sponsors for this week's episode <laughs> of Death Metal Cast. Uh, Hymns and Honey, uh, two sponsors who have actually worked with us in the past. So it's great to have you back. Uh, we'll have more to say about Hymns and Honey later on in the show. Solid segue, Ben. Yes, it, it we needed to get away from good. the vitamin. Yeah. Nobody's <laughs> here. Nobody came to this show to hear us talk about vitamins. We're here well, to talk except about except for the hymns vitamins, which are wonderful. And well, we're sure, drinking sure. water that may or may not contain vitamins. Would you say it's <laughs> vitamin water? <laughs> no, Sam, because that would be a brand mention. Oh, it is water okay. of the vitamins. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Cool. <laughs> it's a cap before I laugh. Where am I knocking over? All right, um, let's go ahead and talk. You mentioned RTX. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll get to uh, the discussion about uh, what we announced at RTX because we've got some cool stuff that we showed off there, and we want to kind of make sure everybody uh, knows about what's coming next to the Death Battle channel. Um, but before we get to that, we do have a quick Q&A for Johnny Cage versus Captain Falcon. As usual, we're doing these Q&As after the episode, the Death Battle episode goes up on YouTube. So we're going to kind of run through those questions real fast. There's not a whole lot. Um, because I think generally everybody seemed to like that episode quite a bit, which is great. Seems it was rare. <laughs> trending on YouTube. Well, yeah, that was like a different thing. Which uh, is... We don't usually get that privilege. I feel like typically YouTube is like, hmm, violent, fuck you. But like <laughs> this time they were like, ah, I guess it's cool. Like <laughs> Especially it, it, it surprised me because Mortal Kombat is in the title. Yeah, right? yeah. And Mortal Kombat 11 has been having a lot of trouble with YouTube. Like people who post Mortal Kombat, especially the fatalities, are getting demonetized or blocked in certain countries. Age gated things like that. The age gate makes yeah. sense because it's people exploding. Age gate makes yeah. sense. But like uh, everything else, people a lot of like uh, uh, fighting game YouTubers are having a lot of trouble with uh, with the Mortal Kombat name. Um, and I was very concerned that just putting Mortal Kombat in the title was going to get us demonetized. Yeah, and to to be fair, those concerns aren't like without grounds. I think it was we had a a, um, a desk of death battle that was like Superman beats up Hitler. In that video is demonetized just because Hitler was in the title. Yes. Like, just the name Hitler's in the title, and they were like, no, and shut it down, and like, <laughs> yep. didn't suggest it and shit. So it's like, that does 
happen. Like it's it's mm-hmm. certainly a concern that we need to be aware of. Little little behind the scenes factoid as well. Um, so w- one of the big concerns with Mortal Kombat is the fatalities, and it. I don't. I don't think YouTube ever actually said anything to confirm this, but a lot of these fighting game YouTubers have mentioned that uh, they f- the fatality animations will get their video removed or blocked or demonetized. Um, specifically, it seems the red blood. So we have a scene in the rundown for Johnny Cage. I think he's killing Cabal. Gerardo edited it, um, and Gerardo actually recolored the blood. To make it not like look really like red, red blood. Yeah, I, nobody. I didn't see anybody no, like calling that out was in the it, comments. It was like current footage. Yeah. From why didn't, why didn't he just capture Cage fighting like Devora? Well, because it was a specific move that we were talking about. I think. Um, but uh, uh, recoloring the blood is something bust that Devora's balls. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, doesn't Cuddlecon have different blood? Whatever. I got it. Yeah. Uh, the 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 point is like. Uh, th- this is something that a lot of people are doing to kind of get around it. We did it too. It seems to have worked. So <laughs> if you're making Mortal Kombat videos, a little recolor, uh, the, recolor blood. the blood, it'll totally work. <laughs> hey, <laughs> at least like, for now, we'll see. <laughs> um, Mortal Kombat people, how about you put some in the options where like you used to be able to switch it like to green blood or sweat? Like that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, dude, probably help the Super Nintendo blood. sweat, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> you could do that and then save your community a little bit of effort here. Yo, you ever beat the sweat out of people? Like it's <laughs> you know, you punch comment, a man yeah, hard like, where the sweat fly off. There's like, like a YouTube version that you can yeah. Yeah. click off in the options. Yeah. Maybe ABC or something like that, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, real quick, getting into the Q and A because I also uh, want to talk about what Genevieve does on Death Battle. Um, I do not. But you, well, I'm you're a writer. Here. You did not write Falcon versus Cage, no, I didn't. but uh, you wrote well. You wrote, let's see, uh, Marvel versus Marvel, right? Marvel versus Shazam. And the premiere, Aquaman uh, Namor. And the premiere, Aquaman Namor. And the upcoming, Aang versus mm-hmm. Edward Elric. And a super secret one later on. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, and some last. You you helped uh, a lot with, what was it, Lucy Carnage? Yeah, I wrote the host for Lucy Carnage. And then yeah. I helped uh, Sean on Nightwing Daredevil yeah, for yeah, the host. Yeah. yeah, so you've been with us for a while now. I wrote a bunch of desk scopes because those were super fun. Yep. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so getting into the questions real fast, I'll, I'll try to knock these out as quickly as possible. So question one, um, so if you haven't seen Captain Falcon versus Johnny Cage, spoilers, go watch it, please. Because we're going to, we're going to spoil it. Three, two, one. (laughs) This first question kind of spoils it. Uh, isn't Falcon using the blue Falcon vehicle to win considered cheating? We kind of talked about this uh, last episode. No, it's part of his arsenal. Also, we don't really mention it at all in our argument. Uh, for his victory, like it doesn't, it doesn't really come into play the vehicle itself. Right, but, but he can call the car. So it's part of his could, arsenal. Right. Also, he's a race car driver who yeah. can call his race car. It would be kind of silly not to incorporate in the fight animation in some way. Like people want to see that. People want to see that. Um, but no, that wasn't necessarily the reason why he won. Uh, so question two: If Johnny's full power wasn't limited to just gods, would he have won? His like Mediterranean war cult power thing is really strange because theoretically he's using it all the time against normal people to throw his like fireballs and stuff like that. Right. But it's specifically his shield, I guess, and enhancement power that he gets uh, when he's fighting Shinnok from it that doesn't work against elder gods or, or doesn't work against anybody other than gods. Um, would he have won with it if it did work against everybody at full power? Maybe um, the numbers... I think would have if I the numbers would have definitely definitely leaned towards his case a bit more than Captain Falcon in that regard, um, but it certainly would have been much closer, and then we would have you know scaled him more directly to that Raiden feat, which was higher than Captain Falcon's scaled to the explosion feat. Um, so the numbers would have been a lot closer, and it would have come down to more skill and um, whether or not they could take a beating. And in that regard, Johnny Cage might have won. But again, that's ch- that would be changing the way his power works, so that we're not going to do that. Um, question three, why did you not talk about Falcon's reaction time driving a car at 2,000 kilometers per hour that's over Mach 2? Does this mean you lowballed him? I mean, we did. <laughs> I love we that did we talk about <laughs> it. Sorry. Even, when ca- even when a character fucking wins, people will still be like, did I think you lowballed, lowballed him. him. It's like... I mean, on. we, no, we I did, so th- this is... This is something that I kind of wanted to talk about just because we can't 
find a specific number for a character all the time, like a very specific number for a character's limits all the time. And Fal both Falcon and Cage, we don't know the exact limits of their speed per se. We know that they can do these certain things. Falcon can drive a car 2,000 kilometers per hour. Uh, Johnny Cage can dodge a bullet. Falcon can take out those three robots in less than a second, which would require over Mach 1 speeds. Um, so generally speaking, they both fall under low mock speeds mock one mock two mock three that kind of area of speed and we just kind of group them together in that way that's why they, we say in our recap um that they were generally the same in terms of speed but neither of them have really showed a very specific limit to that so we didn't enforce that essentially is what happened there um and also we did show the him driving a car at 2000 kilometers per hour so i don't really know why that's a question per se i guess that we didn't specifically bring it up in the recap but we did show it so is there i don't know and your english teacher always says show don't tell exactly <laughs> exactly uh so last question regarding this uh why did you use the anime for falcon uh, but the games for johnny isn't that contradictory and so johnny cage has the, the main storylines in the games and those are easy to follow I right forgot about the mortal kombat Cartoon? cartoon it's it combat have, time so mortal kombat <laughs> does have a cartoon it has a lot of comics and it has quite a few movies and web shows and we did as always we look at all of those for death battle but we do stick with yeah. a primary timeline and then everything else Supports. acts as supporting evidence right. so for johnny cage it was a little different because technically his primary timeline is two timelines it's the same character but then his timeline gets split so Technically, it's the same Johnny, just in two different scenarios. So we're taking both timelines as the primary timeline, per se. Um, but th that's relatively easy to follow. Like, we know what happened in those games. Uh, certain comic books do uh, uh, are canon to those games, especially with the, uh, the reboot comic books. All those are canon. Um, the old Mortal Kombat comic books are, like, all over the place, but some of them are canon. Um, for Falcon, things are a lot different. So not just because the the F-Zero games don't necessarily have a story mode, but because the F-Zero games themselves contradict each other. <laughs> there is a story in F-Zero, but it's different in every single one. And the best example is... So in F-Zero history, in lore of F-Zero, which I looked into for this, of course, and I had no idea this was a thing, there is a inciting incident before each game that uh, is very important to the setup of each game. And each time, this what, basically what it is, is in the past, F-Zero was invented. At some point, there was a massive accident where a bunch of people died, and then it was banned, and then it, became, it came back as a sort of like black market thing, and eventually re-evolved into something popular. And in some games, it's mentioned that Captain Falcon was involved in that big crash. In some games, it's mentioned he comes after it. In some, he came before it. In some games, that big accident happens right before the, the game begins, and some of them, it happened, like, decades ago. It's all different. Like, it, it literally rewrites the story every single time. Um, and again, there wasn't a whole lot of story to use in the first place. So the anime worked out great. And also, the anime kind of pulls from the games anyway. So uh, I think the only, like, huge difference is the year it takes place in, and Samurai Goro is actually cool. Um, in the anime, he kind of sucks in the in the games. He's really stupid for some <laughs> reason. Um, but outside of that, like it just kind of was generally supported by the games. So I figured it wouldn't hurt to stick to the anime as our main timeline for that because there was just more to use and it was a more complete story for Falcon. And also, it explained everything about like how the 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 cars work in the games, how the Falcon Punch power works in Smash Brothers. So of course, we were gonna have a Falcon Punch in the in the in the fight, yeah. like, could you imagine us doing yeah, Captain Falcon and going like, we're just sticking with the games? Oh, that means you can't do Falcon Punch or Falcon Kick. Right. Yeah. That'd be he crazy. Really never does a punch or a kick in the games because he's in a race car. Like, right. it's a racing game. There's a there's like, a combat. Yeah. Have, there's like, did you imagine that though? <laughs> You're like side by side with another F Zero car, and the window just like rolls down, <laughs> and he just fucking Falcon punches out the but window. Yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, that's why we we generally stuck to that. Um, and that kind of that kind of wraps up the questions. It, it didn't seem like there was a whole lot to cover. Uh, I guess there was one other that was about like the, the the him racing the creators at the end of F Zero GX and why we didn't bring up that belt. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, it, it was too vague and also the creators kind of 
they're, they're hinted at that they created the universe, but then when you actually talk to them, it, it sounds like they didn't. They created, uh, why am I blanking on his name? Deathborn, whatever his name is. Um, they created him. They, he was his greatest creation. Then he's going to turn Captain Falcon into the new one. Um, so it's it's a little too vague to try to like basically base an argument around anything regarding the belt or the creators. Uh, but we do mention him in the, in the slate of his feats. So it's still considered, but not used in the argument. Either way, last thing. Uh, the next episode is Aang versus Edward Elric, which Genevieve is writing. I did that awesome. one. <laughs> um, so I had some people, I saw some people asking, like, why are we doing this one? This one seems like a unique matchup. Um, and we have mentioned that this is a season of, like, oddball matchups, but also very popular ones. So where does this fit in? Aang versus Edward Elric was almost one of last season's episodes yep. because it is one of the... <laughs> by far highest requested matchups we've ever seen. Yep. And last season was, was very much about like uh, taking those highly requested long-term fights and and making them into episodes. This one in particular, I believe it was in contention for a spot with uh, uh, Sora versus Pit. And we ended up going with Sora versus Pit mainly because I wanted to make sure we had an animation team capable of doing all the bending and alchemy stuff. Like a lot of custom work went into this yep, animation. Yeah. Uh, and we, we, we had to do it cartoon style, not movie style, where earth bending is like, they got six pebbles. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, know. oh, right. no, no, no. Yeah. We don't even mention, we I don't do think we even scene. mentioned the movie, right, in the script? Are you kidding me? No, no, God, no. Yeah, no, no, the movie, <laughs> forget that ever existed. Um, but, Actually, yeah. Actually, no, I based a lot of my research on the movie. Oh, God, don't say that. that. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... I'll, I'll, the main reason why it wasn't done last year is because we wanted the animation to be really cool. Yeah. I just thought, <laughs> your, uh, RGX just kept throwing out Goku vs. Superman. What if, what if what? we... No, I didn't. You said Goku vs. Superman like three you, times yeah, on the panel. Yeah, you mentioned it um, multiple times. Okay. Uh, what if we did mo- live-action movie Goku versus only live-action movie Superman? <laughs> The one that can turn back time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot about you that. You can do it against Smallville. Yeah. Uh, super, super <laughs> the red, blue blur or whatever he went by. Um, <laughs> that could work. That's, they're basically, they're both That'd in high so school. Ridiculous. No, one, totally no one wants that. Nobody does. <laughs> the Goku versus Superman 3 that nobody wants. <laughs> it's like when they made the Street Street Fighter the movie fighting game. Like, nobody wanted that. No one asked for it. And Actually, yet, Street Fighter the movie the game? Uh, yes. Yeah. Shit, who Plus played? Who, yes. <laughs> so who, who played Goku? Justin Chatwin, right? Played I Goku. Don't know. Uh, Justin Chatwin, Goku versus whoever played Smallville, Clark Kent. Perfect. Good community death battle right there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That would be fun. I'd like to see uh, that. Man, that'd be terrible. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're very excited about Aang versus Edward Elric. Uh, Genevieve did a fantastic job on the script. Um, that fight, uh, I think we'll have a sneak peek of that fight next week on Death Battle Cast. Mm-hmm. Um, so you came at just like so close so to the close. perfect yeah. time to be on cast. I don't live here. It was uh, really inconvenient of you. I'm, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, I, I just showed up. I was like, hey, can someone house and feed me? <laughs> like, I want to go to RDX, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, uh, Genevieve started here as an intern. I did. Uh-huh. I was on a couple sudden deaths uh, last a summer. A year ago, right? Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. The first one, I roasted Tori, and the second one, I got my comeuppance, and Sam just roasted me the entire time. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. Look at he's got that happy little smile yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw somebody shitting on you in the death battle slack about the wiki- liking Waligi still. No, because like, cause Ed like, like saw that, that, that uh, meme some was death. still going on. It, I, Wait, what happened? Uh, I, I, was, I, was, I don't know. I was Sam and Cutie wanted about, to fuck while Luigi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> And oh, wow. You both missed this, didn't you? The kids yeah. are really big on Waluigi. I and I was like, no. With these children. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> But in the chat, in our personal like death battle Slack, they're still busting their balls about so, it. Which is fun. So, what is it about Waluigi? <laughs> Literally nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Zero anything. Like, I mean, if, he's if, tall. If, if you're gonna pick a video game character Mustache. to do, like, is it the not rose? Waluigi? He does the the rose thing now, yeah, right? Is yeah, it working? Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is, is the new canon like he's trying to seduce me and I'm just re- resisting really hard? Yes, yeah, like, specifically <laughs> you. The Scott, ladies, with the Scott, rose now? They Scott love the walk, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, wow. Uh, Where's, wow. What's our next thing to talk <laughs> yeah, about? Yeah, please, let's move on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that was it for the first for the first segment. Uh, so we can well, go ahead and head on to... We can... Uh, we can t- <laughs> every segue that I was about to make, I'm going to shelf. Well, uh, it's all Luigi's hair, though. It's and true. something else. <laughs> yep, that's true. Hey, mustache. Listen, right. I'm gonna tell you about hymns. Uh, 
When it comes to taking care of your body, uh, it can be easy to ignore things as opposed to going to the doctor. Uh, maybe you're embarrassed or you think that there's no solution to your problem. Uh, well, today I want to tell you about 4 a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for uh, men. Uh, specifically, uh, today we're going to talk about erectile dysfunction. Uh, sexual performance issues are more common than you'd think. Uh, one in four guys suffer from ED, uh, but it can be treated. Uh, over 25% of new ED cases are actually guys under 40. Um, and Hims wants to help. Uh, so, if you're experiencing issues like this, don't turn to word solutions, turn to medicine and science. Uh, for Hims provides convenient access to U.S. doctors online and real medicine dispensed from American pharmacies. Uh, Sildenafil, I always mess this uh, name up, Uh, Sildenafil, the active ingredient in Viagra, can be prescribed for men online and delivered right to their door. So, Hims has been a sponsor for a long time now, uh, and I got to get on the call, uh, a call with, like, the creator of the company, and it was really cool hearing, like, their inspiration for it, because, like, really just realizing, like, a lot of people suffer from things like this, and it can be embarrassing to talk about, and it can be embarrassing to go, you know, to a doctor and do that stuff. Um, and so they wanted to create an option uh, to hopefully make some people feel more comfortable. So there's no waiting room, uh, so you save time, and you get to talk with a real doctor still, but from the comfort of your own home. Uh, they're completely confidential and discreet. The first month, first month is just five dollars. Uh, it'll get you started for just five bucks while supplies last, and su- and subject to doctor approval. See website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds of all, hundreds of dollars uh, if you went to a doctor or pharmacy but go to forhims.com slash cat uh, sorry go to forhims.com slash cast ed uh, that's f-o-r-h-i-m-s dot com slash cast ed forhims.com slash cast ed not slash cats yeah which I, this is what you almost said i'm a little tongue i'm a little tongue tied today man i i'm rtx to get out of me well man. let's go ahead and talk about rtx with what's going on oh. Position. <laughs> what's what's going on, everybody? How hey. is RTX? Uh, it, really fun but exhausting. Uh, this was by far my, my far my busiest RTX. Yeah, uh, I actually for the first time wasn't hungover or poorly rested for our like signing. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it was you know, and the panel to be honest. Uh, it, and it was <laughs> it was a whole new world. I had energy. I was like I was like hello people. Like, <laughs> Come like and yeah. Usually I'm like, oh god. <laughs> so, well, you yeah. know me, dude. I'm like a never-ending like battery of energy. But dude, after that signing, because I right before that I stopped by the Extra Life booth and did a meet and greet for 30 minutes, and then I was stopping and talking to people on the floor, and then we did that hour and a half signing. And after that, I was like, all right, cool. And then I'm like walking out of there, and I was like, oh no, like I just like withered and died. Uh, I needed to grab a Red Bull. It, I was very very tired, but it was great. Yeah, super fun. It was pretty fun. And we and we had a really awesome uh, death battle panel where we got to announce a bunch of cool like a stuff. A million things. Um, real quick before we get into that though, did want to bring up some fan art we got. Oh really? So let's go ahead and bring up that first one from Dare Arms, I believe. Dare Arms. Dare Arms. And this oh, is cool. for the upcoming cool. death battle. Nice. He did a fantastic job with it. Uh, this is on Deviant Art, and he wrote about how he's excited for the upcoming <gasps> episode. So he, he needed an excuse to draw this. I so, can neither confirm go. nor deny accuracy. <laughs> of the fight? Yeah. I mean... That would be, be great. That exact scene is just in the fight. <laughs> yeah. It just so happens yeah. that exact same frame is in the fight. Yeah. Uh, and then we got another one. Wait, is this from the same person? No. Anarchy, Anarchy it, it says their arms on the thing. Oh, it's from Anarchy... Hamster. Well, let's go ahead and bring this up. I remember Anarchy that Hamster. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Boomstick oh, as an, an air, uh, air nomad. Uh, but apparently he's asleep. Yeah. I mean, he's <laughs> meditating. Like, yeah, oh, got it. You were That's meditating, true. and then you're like, oh. I like, yeah, Boomstick like 100% would fall asleep. The style with, like, the bamboo and yeah. shit. Yeah, that's like, great. It's, yeah, you kind of nailed the aesthetic of it. I like that. That's it's dope. awesome. It's super cool. It's really cool. Uh, okay, so for RTX, we had a big death battle panel where we showed off a lot of cool stuff and announced some cool we things. Uh, the first thing we showed off, uh, or at least that we're talking about here, was the death battle game. Yeah. And we'll which, talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ben did that on the panel. I did. It was fun. <laughs> um, but uh, so the Death Metal game, we managed to get some copies to sell at RTX. Uh, but unfortunately, it was a very small shipment. That we had to we, do a rush early shipment just so we could have some there. And it was like, so we had like 100 out there. Um, but the main sold big out in yeah. less than 24 hours, which is crazy because I had no idea. 
if this would actually work out. It was before out. we even told people the game was there, it sold yeah, out. We That's just the thing. It it's, yeah. me. it's not like we were like, hey, everybody go buy the game. <laughs> it was just like, before our panel started, we sold them all. And it was like, oh, we haven't told people about this yet. Our panel was Saturday, kind of like in, the, in around noon. And then we had a panel Sunday about the game. But then, for like Saturday morning, I was asking like, "Well, what's the status of the game?" And Sean was like, "Oh yeah, there's like three left." Yeah. And then by the panel started, it was all gone. So uh, thank you to everybody who bought it and tried it out. Like it's really amazing to me um, that we actually managed to make this happen. Um, and thanks to everybody, of course, who made it happen, like Brian, Zach, Kara, and all the artists. So many amazing artists. Um, so what's gonna happen is the game will be available to everybody. Uh, sometime later this fall, we're we're shooting for like either late August or early to mid September. It's going to be around that time. Um, I believe there's going to be a form up later on that you can you can sign, sign up, up for, to. like essentially to be notified when the game's being restocked and stuff like that. Yes, to make sure that everybody's ready ready uh, once it is available. Um, so real quick, I just want to show off a couple of things. They can give it a little example. So sure. basically. You got weapons, you got armor, and you got skill cards, right? Because it's Death Valley. And Ben, we want to be very clear, this is not Super Fight. That was like going into this, like when Ben was concepting this game, that was like priority number one. Like, no, the, the point of this game is to duel an opponent. It's right. a one versus one game. So what you do is you build a character using weapons and armor, right? Like, so for example, here is a laser sword. It's definitely not a lightsaber. It's a yep. laser sword, okay? <laughs> um, and like here, and then now like for armor, we've got, what is this one? Cyborg body. Should I just right? ban a white it where I'm like... Yeah, yes, there you go. Perfect. Thank you, Jeffy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then you build skills. And we've got a bunch of stuff. So we've used... There's a lot of those, like, laser sword type parody things, right? Or whatever. But we also got to... You know, so we've got, like, stuff in from Death Battle. So, like, Boomstick's Leg is one. Uh, if you're a fan of Rooster Teeth and watch Extra Life, we have the Cheese Master. Um, but then also we get to use uh, other properties in the company, like uh, Ruby. We got her, her silver, silver eyes. eyes. Um... But uh, there's, there's also stuff from all all yeah, sorts Gemlock, of. Yeah. Essentially, the cards are all inspired by characters we've had in Death Battle. My favorite being, uh, if you remember from Chuck Norris versus Sega Sancho, Chuck Norris is able to communicate with and weaponize dolphins. <laughs> oh, so yeah, one right. of the cards is a weaponized dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's one of my favorite cards. Yeah. Um, what are some other fun ones? So the, the general idea of the game is you create, you set up a a a character or a yeah, you, set of weapons, armor, and skills. Armor and skills or armor weapons and then you do the three skills right? yes yeah. and then those uh, let you collect dice and there are different colored dice yeah. each color denotes a different ability for the dice um, and some of them add to your attack power some of them will affect your opponent's cards or their dice uh, and then at the end of the round you roll to see who wins that match this is my favorite thing there's an absurd amount of dice and it's really fun like <laughs> Yeah. It's 50 dice. Yeah, there are 50 die in the game, um, and it is, like, already building the characters, and, like, it's different every time because you're constantly mixing up stuff and finding what you want to play with. Um, and there's actually some cool cards in there that allow you to kind of, like, maybe swap up your thing on the yes. fly for strategy. It's um, great. And, but then, and real quick, if, if you were at RTX or you saw the RTX build, oh, my God, there's just going to be dice sounds now. Go, go <laughs> I'm ahead and put them back. I'm, I'm, I'll put them back. Okay, I just okay. want to show them off. They're very colorful and they're fun. And at the end of the game, they look a little like candy. Don't eat them. They like, do. Do not. That was my first <laughs> thing. When they came in, I was like, wow, those really look delicious. Um, <laughs> do not eat them. But then you, so you see. Maybe you don't up. get this for very little kids. It's <laughs> like it's like power Yahtzee at the end. Yeah, like, yeah. Basically, basically, you scoop up what you've built yeah. and they scoop up what they've built. And also, we printed made the box. The inside is a little battle arena. So you each have your own little arena. And when you scoop up your dice at the end, you then throw them in there, and they don't stick to your hand. Uh, and then you count up your hits, and it's really fun to do. Are your hands really sweaty for some reason? I think it was just because I was just rubbing them together. Oh. We're not giving anybody that, unless you want I'll take this it. copy of I still don't have my copy yet. Hand sweat. None of us no. have copies. Yeah, none of us have copies. They, I want to make sure everybody who wants whenever, one can get one. It shows up. Um, so yeah, so uh, we'll talk more about this game when, when it's available, publicly available. We just um, wanted to give you all a little look at what it is please stop <laughs> um yeah and if you were at rtx or saw the rtx hold on oh Whoops. my god oh we're losing some price. shit they're everywhere we're, we're back to asmr honestly where it's like a... no that's oh, bad go. asmr though <laughs> slamming a bunch of fucking dice on the if table if you were R at rtx or saw the rtx build there is a a oh, bonus pack associated with it with 20 extra cards that are based on rooster teeth properties directly um those will be in the first 
like big shipment that we have available later on this year. Essentially, so, the first edition copies will all come with RTX. So if you buy yeah. it, like when we get it in in you know either late August, early September, you'll get the pack with the twenty extra. That's where like Ruby's eyes come from and stuff like that. Um, yes, the the twenty extra is kind of a, a test run to see if we can do expansion packs later on, um, and if the game does well, if it you know sells well and people really like it. I would love to do more cards and, and build upon this game because I think I think it it's totally built for that. Um, Shout out to Brian Riley. Yes, but we'll we'll uh, we'll see where it goes. So we'll let you know when it is available uh, to purchase. But uh, thank you again to everybody who's picked it up so far. Um, and then product place the hell out of that. <laughs> uh, the next biggest thing that we mentioned at the panel, which Sam, I'll kind of let you go into this, but it's. Uh, Everybody's been wondering where DBX is. Yeah. So what's going on so with DBX? We, I think we, we have something to show as well. Yeah, we will show you here in a second. Like in the last really two years, we brought Death Battle up like really high in forms of like we added, you know, the host animations and all that stuff. And like in general, we raised the show up a couple bars. And so with DBX, we essentially wanted to give it the same treatment and bring it up a couple bars and like make it feel just better in like every way, shape, and form. And so yeah, we've been working on that. Sean and I have been working on that with alongside all of our animators, like especially Luis and Christina and Paige, and everybody's really been pitching in to try and make it like as good as it can be. And we've made it pretty badass. So yeah, uh, I think we have like a little trailer to show you, so you guys can watch that. Right, so I think it's a little intro of the new host. Yeah, yeah. yeah for so, DBX. Yeah, Let's go ahead we'll and play that. that bit. So yeah, yeah, and like as, as you just met, that's Ringmaster, the new host of DBX, which is voiced by a wonderful man named Billy here in the office, which is really, we've sent out like a big casting call, and like we had a lot of great auditions and stuff, and then Billy, who we happen to work with, was one of the people, and he just happens to have like, he sounds like a cartoon, and it's perfect. <laughs> and like, it's great, and yeah, he, he, he nails the voice and everything, and so it's been a lot of fun. I think you might get to meet him next week on the cast. Um, yes, I, I think we'll talk more about DBX uh, in, in the coming weeks because uh, the new DBX premieres this upcoming weekend, right? On July the 13th. 13th, yeah. Yep. So, and uh, yeah, uh, that, that's it. that also gives us an easy transition because like we couldn't have really done it without our wonderful sponsor, Honey, who happens to be a sponsor of today's Death Battle cast. Wow, would you look at that. <laughs> so let me tell you a little something about Honey. I don't know why I'm looking at this, because I actually use Honey myself a lot. I don't know if y'all do, you should, but nope. I'm gonna guess that you, as a person in 2019, shop on the internet. <laughs> I have both good and bad news for you. The bad news is you've been missing out and not saving money. The good news is you can start now with Honey. Pretty much all you need to know about Honey is it is an app for your browser and you download it and then anytime you're in a checkout system or cart system for like anything, it doesn't matter, Amazon, Newegg, Razor, literally the Rooster Teeth store site, Honey pops up and it goes, hey, we got some dope coupons for you. Would you like to apply those coupons to your cart and save money? And you're like, yeah, of course I like saving money. That's a no brainer. And Honey's like, cool, we got your back and then they apply all these coupons, they give you the best coupon that saves you the most money, and then you've saved money. That's how simple the system is. Like You just download it, it takes like a second, and then you start saving money. I've been using it for quite a long time. They sponsored Death Battle Cats like probably a year ago, and I was like, cool, I'll check that out. And like since then, I mean, like I said, even on the Rooster Teeth store, it stacks a discount for me, which is crazy. I was like, cool. I didn't know. I didn't know about the coupon at the company I work about, and Honey was like, we got you, fam. Like, I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, did that to me, yeah, too. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, okay, Honey. They, they can so, also help track prices, right? Yeah, like, if it goes down. Prices. Like, there's a lot more features, but the basic one is just, like, I mean, the concept is it will save you money, and it has a lot of tools to do that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you haven't, I would highly suggest checking out Honey. You've heard endorsements from us. We all like it, honestly. Like seriously, it's just mm -hmm. so it's so simple. It's like a thing that just like works, and you're like, great. So it's yeah, free. um, yeah. you just put it on your browser. You're good to go. Yeah, and just to do you know away with any misconceptions, it never like there's no charge or anything. It is 100% free. 
they don't make a penny off of you. You just get a bonus from, like, you just get coupons, essentially. Yep. So, yeah, go ahead and download Honey. Over 10 million people are already saving with Honey, and it has over 130,000 five-star reviews on Google Chrome Store. Time Magazine calls Honey basically free money, which I would agree with. And so, yeah, look, there's really no reason to not use Honey. It's free. You can use it. It's easy to install. Two clicks on your computer. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash cast. That's joinhoney.com slash joinhoney.com slash cast. That's how it reads. But yeah, joinhoney.com slash cast. Honey, online savings simplified. Yeah, there you go. No reason not to do it. Please go do it. And if you already have it in your browser, re-download it using that <laughs> link. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't say that, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just to kind of wrap it up. Yeah, honey, we wouldn't be able to do this new version. Yeah, of DBX is honey. like the entire season is brought to you. You might have noticed in that little trailer. It's I don't know. It's kind of like, subtle. Yeah, like <laughs> they, you have, they, if you squint they, and look yeah. at the far distance, you might see. Honey plastered all over the background. Yeah. Because it's built like an arena, and you know, yeah. you see ads in an arena when you go to a sporting event or something like that. So that's kind of what the new DBX is built to feel like. Yeah, and Honey was really down to help us with this project, and they really, like, I mean, the thing wouldn't necessarily happen without Honey. And so, yeah, thanks, Honey, for letting us make our shows better. Yeah. And, yes. yeah, and saving me a couple dollars. So <laughs> all the time. really great. Yeah, like, I mean, everything you buy, it's like, here's a coupon. I'm like, oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and jump into the community death battle. So this week is going to be a little different um, because as if you watched last week's episode, uh, we set up uh, Teen Gohan versus Superboy. And it turns out that that is actually the first episode of the new DBS. Well, yeah, turns out. What turns a coincidence. Out, oh my God. Didn't plan that at all. Definitely not a planned bamboozle. Wow. But, yeah. <laughs> wow. A bamboozle. Well, <laughs> oh, my God. So what's going to happen right now? you think about throwing your water at me? No, I was saying oh. if I had water because I'm so thirsty. Because <laughs> it looked like you're like, should I just fucking throw it out? No, I'm not going to fucking splash you. No, uh, no, Jen, I'm <laughs> the water of vitamins. I'm good. <laughs> So what we're going to do is, um, I don't think we even really talked about it, but the new DBX uh, lets you uh, basically dictate who wins. Um, mm -hmm. You all get to vote on the winner uh, once the episode is announced. And we have announced Gohan versus Superboy. If you go to the Death Battle Twitter, you can find a link to a place where you can vote for the winner of that episode which will air this weekend July 13th. Uh, so we actually had a live vote at um yeah at our, really at our rtx panel and surprise surprise really they voted for gohan uh, <laughs> so they got to see the ending where gohan wins yeah but there are actually two endings so, so there depending is one where superboy wins in like we went our way to make sure that the the alternate endings aren't just like the same thing happens to the other person kind of thing is like they're different endings and well, like especially the superboy one like it this is like a the show where we get to be biased and like there's no research or anything and like I personally want Gohan to win this fight because I like <laughs> Gohan as a character much more than Superboy. Right. And I I have a hunch he might win this vote. Like <laughs> just, just knowing the community. But sadly, like I honestly think the Superboy ending is like really fucking cool. Well, like good the news. way he yeah. In good news, you can if you're like a first member, you can watch it. You know, after like uh, it should go up alongside July thirteenth, you'll be able to watch the alternate ending as well. So, even if your character doesn't win the vote, you can still see them win the fight via your first membership on Rooster. Well, Saturday, and though. and that's a big thing with the show is uh, you've been working with these animators for a long time, and this entire season because basically the first episode airs this weekend, and then the next nine episodes of the season of a ten episode season will yeah. air. Every single weekend after that. Yeah, it's every Saturday for the next 10 weeks is going to be a new DBX. So f starting this weekend for 10 weeks, we've got DBXs coming up. And all of them have basically been animated. So we do have the two endings for every single one without knowing which character is going to be voted as the winner. It's going to be so, really interesting to see. Yeah. yeah. So obviously both endings were made with the intention of it being the official ending of yeah. the official release. So none of the endings are like... 
We, we didn't skip. Second we didn't end skip on because, yeah, yeah. oh, obviously this is going to be the alternate ending, so we don't need to put in as much effort, right? No, that was there was no talk about that whatsoever. She's a person in a T-pose, and then they fall over. <laughs> uh, like, yeah. no, no. There's there's a lot of different fights. Like We have different animators. There's 3D fights, 2D fights. Like There's a lot to come for it. It's really cool. Like I'm super excited, especially like the season just kind of gets like, cooler and cooler and we do some niche fights that I don't think people would expect and then we do some real bangers which are like you know huge names like it's gonna be a lot of fun because DBX was always the general idea was to give the these animators uh, some just a, a place to play really yeah, and have yeah. a good time making mm -hmm. a fight that they want to make and, and kind of toy around with how it goes without necessarily having a beat for beat script like Death Battle yeah. has to have. Hence Thor versus 100 Pikachu. Yes. And we're still keeping that idea. Oh, we're yeah, just most adding definitely. to it with like some rundowns with the new character Ringmaster, uh, voting from the community from you guys to let us know who you think should win, um, alternate endings, there's all sorts of new things. Mm -hmm. Music from Aaron yeah. uh, for the intro, which sounds awesome. Yeah, intro uh, music's badass. Yeah. yeah. Um, so please check that out this weekend. It's going to be super fun, and I can't wait to see everybody's reactions to who wins and the votes for yep. each episode. It's going to be really interesting. Um, so for today, we do have arguments for Gohan versus Superboy, but we will continue this death uh, community death battle as a DBX into next week, so you still have time to give answers. So real quick, if you're not sure who you think should win, who you think you should vote for, let me give you some... Uh, some arguments from members of the community, and maybe uh, maybe one of them will convince you, and you can go vote on the on, on the one that is posted on our at Death Battle Twitter. So from Martin Tolberg, we have an answer for uh, Gohan, and he says, honestly, I actually think Gohan can win. Unlike Superman, Superboy hasn't mastered absorbing solar energy, which has been used against him in the past. Also, unlike Goku, Gohan is a lot smarter. Gohan, at a young True. age, had huge potential to being very powerful. Yeah, and then they really screwed that up. Sorry. Uh, I know some people like it. It's a sore spot for me. He's doing a new thing now, which is, like, really, like, I hope they move forward with it. Because he's, like, trying to be more powerful without going Super Saiyan. And he's, like, unlocking the human side of Super Saiyan, kind of is like where it looks like they're pushing his character right now in in super and it's like i want them to go further with that because then like if he can unlock superhuman then the other humans can and like you can bring back yamcha and make him cool again <laughs> and then he can be one of the only characters that is both superhuman super saiyan and then like you can make a new thing where it's like matters again yeah yeah We'll see if they fucking do that. That's where I hope they're going. With no, they're gonna home. they're gonna tee it up, and you're gonna oh. be oh, you're gonna be so excited about it, and then instead he's gonna go fuck off and go to school or something. He's gonna be a professor. Like, well, next, and then Goku's next, gonna yeah. come in and save the day because he right. always does. Yep, dude, uh, <laughs> I still can't believe in fucking Resurrection F. You thought Vegeta finally got his moment, and they fucking went back in time to be like, <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah. he doesn't. And Goku gets to fucking fly in and save the day. Anyway, we also have an answer uh. for Superboy. Uh, from Z1 Puncher, and he says, uh, Superboy takes us easy. He kept up with base Orion, who clashed with, with an nth golem, and the shockwave destroyed a solar system. He keeps he keeps up with Supergirl. Blah, blah, he keeps up with Supergirl, who took on Cyborg Superman, who can take hits from Post Crisis Superman. And Superboy keeping up with Supergirl and even Bart Allen in speed means he can blitz Gohan. So it's a speed argument, essentially. That's so interesting. I could, I could see that, but at the same, like, I, one thing I want to know is like, and I don't know enough about it. But, like, there's also like Magic Gohan. Mystic yeah, Gohan. he's got mystic the Mystic Gohan. Energy kind of and thing. And I don't know if that Mystic Energy falls within the realm of magic that, like, say, a Superman would be weak to. And I don't know if Superboy has That's that. Well, we're, we're using Teen Gohan. Yeah. Oh have, yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't have his, yeah, right, you're, you're right. You're right. Yet. You're right. You're right. Not yet. He doesn't cool. have the Mystic Saiyan, mm -hmm. Super Saiyan form, or whatever yeah. it was called. Yeah. Uh, it had there's a bunch of names. There's too many different forms now. The Super Saiyans, <laughs> like Super Saiyan them. Rage and yeah, Trunks Rose has a new one, and things that like that. Rage yeah, one. it's all over the place. <laughs> Rose, I, <laughs> <laughs> I want Super Saiyan Rose, Rose. so bad. Dude, oh. it is. No, that's Black that's Rose. Black. No, it's Rose. No, no way. It's Rose. No, uh, yeah, I thought it was it's just called Rose. Super Saiyan Rose. I thought it was Rose. That's what it looks like. It is, but it's actually pronounced Super Saiyan Rose. No way. <laughs> Rose all day? Rose all day? <laughs> oh, that's so dope. Dude, I can't wait. He probably goes out, kicks ass, then comes home and hangs a live, laugh, love on his wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. You can let us know who should win this DBX by going to the uh, at Death Battle Twitter and voting on the post for it there. Uh, and again, that episode will air this weekend on the 13th. 
please check it out. We'd love to know what you think of it. And then uh, every episode after that, every weekend after that. It's Make sure you good. vote. Yes, please vote. Yeah, please vote. Vote, vote, vote. Uh, And then the next episode of DBX will be announced at the end of that one, correct? Yep. So you can then vote on the next episode, literally the same day that the uh, the current one airs. It's going to be fun. It's going to be real cool to see. Uh, mm-hmm. This is uh, something brand new for us. I don't think, uh, outside of Community Death Battle, we've, we've never really done a community vote thing for a show. Um, or so ever it'll be like cool a weekly see. show. Yeah, we've never like, done a DBX weekly Death Battle thing. It used to be bi-weekly. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the this is a first for us in a lot of ways. Yeah, yep. which is really cool. So thank you all. Thank you to to everybody who's supported us for this long to get to this point, and also of course to Honey for allowing us to make this show. Big ups um, to Honey, we, for sure. we wouldn't have been able to do it without. To be mm-hmm. perfectly honest. Um, but and thanks Genevieve for being on the show today. Oh, yes. Thank yeah. Well, <laughs> I wanted to kind of wrap me. this up a little bit by talking about Genevieve's episodes. Oh boy! Yeah, you're you're here. Let's yeah, talk a little no, bit about here. your episode. Let's, let's go for it. You've been you've been writing with us for. Uh, over a year. I guess over a year yeah. at this point, right? If I we... started in uh, the beginning of June last year, pretty much. Was that the internship? I feel yeah. like it's yes. been longer than that. It does feel it like it came May year. like 28th or 29th is when I like started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then I guess Aquaman vs. Namor was your first like... Full on my own. Full on your own episode. Because I started with the uh, Top 10 Worst Dads thing though. Yeah. The, and, oh, and my yeah, very right. first day, I sat down. Nick was like, you're writing Shadow Talker's entry first. He sent me the episode where he you know, puts his daughter and his dog together. <laughs> and, and Sam looks over at me and he's like, what a great face for your first day. Cause I'm sitting there like, oh. yeah, <laughs> that was how we initiated. Yeah. That was your first project. That's that right. Very first project. Yeah. She can get through that. She can get through anything. That's yeah. Like, no, I, I yeah. did that. And then Chad was like, so well, how much did you write of the top 10 script? And I was like the entire script. He's like, well, no, well, what entries did you write? And I'm like, all of them. Yeah. yeah. Cause normally we start out, uh, we would start out our writing interns by doing like take an entry of yeah. top ten or two entries, uh, but yeah, I just or help out go, with the rundown. I just wanted to do it. I was just like, I'll just do all of them. It's yeah, cool. I think you were just kind of given the project and you just went with it. So I was like, like, well, Nick, what do I do next? He was like, you can do another one if you want. Like, because you were quick, you know yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, yep. you were very jump in and writer. make it happen, uh, which was awesome. So yeah. one of the reasons why we we figured you'd be great for Death Battle. You decided to keep me. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> keep you around. What's yeah. great too is like when I'm reading a script. Uh, if it's full of ridiculous puns, I know it's either Sam on a silly day or Genevieve immediately. Like <laughs> you can really tell all the writers, like especially like I, I can I can just like start reading and like within a couple lines I'm like okay this Genevieve especially tax is like the easiest because like his gr- his grammar is like on par with mine and I know <laughs> I didn't write it so like there's only <laughs> one other person that could have done it and like boy is spelt with an I every fucking <laughs> instance, Does really? every instance. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you know tax, like, and they're funny, and like, yeah, it's just like I always know a tax script, and yeah. I know a Genevieve script, and in Liam's are, like, I'm just like, ooh, that math is good. <laughs> <laughs> Liam's like, yeah. I just love puns so much. I know you say. Do. Like, I just tweeted too because I was uh, telling Luis, I was like, Luis, uh, what does a pirate say when he turns eighty? Oh no. I am eighty. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> and then Luis was like, I'm glad you're back, Genevieve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's why we keep you around for, for lines oh, like always that. The puns. Listen, I'm so proud of the puns at the end of this, like, ang battle. Oh, well, now I tune in. I didn't change it, did I? Did you change it? I don't know. Sometimes I do. I don't know if I oh, did. Well, we no. recorded this a while ago. I don't think you did. Okay. I don't think you did for this one. Hopefully not. Typically, now, I feel, now I'm already like. It's okay. Re- no, I think. No, I think, regardless, I'm sure they're great puns. I'll be happy. We've with we've them. we've gotten to a point where I think most of our writers like can figure out the pun to have at the end. Mm-hmm. Genevieve's really good at that. Yeah. Um. So like way back when, uh, when we were all like juggling a bunch of different roles, I would often just leave the ending of the yeah. script. It literally just says pun, and then you would come up with it on the fly. Yeah. But. Lately, we've just had the pun at the end, and you've just read it yeah. as it as it stands. And I think this is one of those examples. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, good job. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. We should go back and double check because I'm gonna feel bad if I check. No, it's. It. <laughs> um, I knew that. Like, I knew the uh, ones at the end of uh, Namor and uh, like Marvel, Marvel needed some fine tuning. So I was just like, he tried and like. <laughs> oh, he tried. Tried and dense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I that. Namor said, "Namor, to Aquaman." <laughs> Yeah, I think we did change that yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> that one yeah, it was yeah. really bad. Like, it yeah. was a stretch. It was a pretty mm-hmm. bad one. I, was like, I, had fun. I had a lot of fun in that one. Yeah, I, oh, it was right. going to really fun places, and then, like, 
that was in the booth was when I was like, I feel like we should just stab booth and, then, <laughs> and then just scream. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, all of our episodes go through this evolution process with the writing, but of course it, it has to start somewhere. Yeah. Um, and Genevieve is great at that. Yep. Um, so, uh, what, out, out of all your, uh, your scripts that you've, you've written for us, um, or worked on, what's your favorite? Who? Or just or anything death that stands out or anything anything, anything really uh because i i st- well because i mean come on the donald duck has ptsd desk of like i just remember <laughs> tell- i remember pitching that to sam and he'd be like what now <laughs> yeah but then um of death battles like i loved carnage lucy because i just was like wow look at my new murder queen I, <laughs> like- <laughs> I i think that's the point actually when we were like yeah she'd be she'd be really great to to stick with death battle she knows oh, sure. what's going on and yep. then uh with uh with marvel marvel honestly i just remember laughing so hard in our meeting at my own joke <laughs> where, where, where oh my god can i talk about that a bit which so, one though because there are multiple that i know i laugh well my ass no, just the at. general idea of our meet so <laughs> generally what happens with with writing these is is the writer will obviously spend like a week or, yeah. or however much is needed to write the first draft uh mm. of each script um specifically think about the rundowns she's already (laughs) laughing (laughs) typically what happens is i get in a meeting with these writers and we go over the script we we make sure everything is there that needs to be and you know uh cover the information that needs to be there make some tweaks and then i'll have some feedback and then they'll take the feedback and work on the script again and then we'll have another meeting etc etc Genevieve's meetings always take like an extra hour. <laughs> not because she's a bad writer, not because she has a lot of things that need fixing, just because she will go off on tangents. I've done lately. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just she'll just start talking about stuff and we'll have this ridiculous conversation about whatever is going on. And then at some point I'll go like, what are we talking about? <laughs> we need to get back on topic. And then we'll try, and then she'll go off on another tangent. Yeah, she'll be like, <laughs> she'll, because you always will make some like casual little remark. Like, <laughs> it'll be like, blah, blah, blah. It's like, wait, so why did he get this power? Oh, that's because, and it was it, the, the words, she's great at simplifying the most ridiculous thing into like four or five words. And then I'm like, what? <laughs> and then it's like, oh, okay, so you see, well, and this happened, and this person then did this, yeah. and, then, and that's when you get the whole, that's when the. To like get to it, it's like, don't look his PTSD. Oh, yeah, because he was in World War II, he like killed a bunch of Japanese people. And you're like, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was like really racist. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was pretty fucking racist, yeah. yeah. But then with the Marvel, Marvel, Marvel script, I remember just like, you were reading through it, and I was, I made this bit where, uh, I was like, why does Billy follow this random dude into a subway station? Like, uh, and it was like Boomstick asking that, and Wiz was like, Boomstick, he doesn't have parents. Because you're like, doesn't, didn't his dad teach him about stranger danger? Uh, and yeah. like, no, <laughs> he doesn't have one. Mm-hmm. Dark. <laughs> Nothing like a good orphan joke to <laughs> close out voice. an episode. <laughs> I, I think this is the I worst. mean, we kept one of them. There was well, yeah. definitely an orphan joke in there at some point, which... It's sad. <laughs> I think one of my favorite things to do in Death Battle is highlight just strange, weird moments and things that we come across. Absolutely. Uh, and like, and the, hands down, my favorite will always be He Man. <laughs> when I, because I stick out, I'm like almost gonna tear up crying laughing about it. <laughs> I don't. It was just so fucking funny to me because you and I were going back and forth doing the research. And I just saw that scene, and I had to, I, like, something was wrong with my brain, and I was like, something was wrong there. Go back. <laughs> And it's this cart has gone away, like, because He-Man episodes always start out with, like, some little minor catastrophe has happened and He-Man saves the day. And then we go into, like, what this episode's going to be about. So there's, like, this kid, and he's got, like, an oxen, and it's, like, pulling this cart. And the chain snaps, and the cart, like, goes careening down a hill. He-Man stops it, you know, and He-Man's his way up and, like, sets it back. And as he's, like, talking to the kid to be more careful, he's just like, make sure next time you're blah, blah, blah. And he holds the chain. And, like, it's this is He-Man. He could easily bend metal. Right, like, <laughs> but I guess they didn't want to animate him bending the link back. But like, they could have just had his hand closed, and you would have assumed. Right. Well, the, but the, the link is broken in a way that's two horseshoes, it's, basically. Right. It's two horseshoes. Like so like, there was a million ways they could have done this, but instead, it's just like as he's casually making eye contact with his kid, like teaching this kid a life lesson, he just touches them back together, and they glow, and then they're one chain again. And I was like, <laughs> in an he, instant, it's just like, psh, psh, oh, it's and there it is, and like they <laughs> never acknowledge it, and I'm like. He just fucking magic that chain back together, and I was like, "Wait, well, that has to go in the episode." Absolutely, fucking he man. Yep, he's got he has, weird shit. But he doesn't do magic shit. Like he kind of does. It's all like strength and speed with him, man. Like he's got like his accessories, but like he's not like shooting beams or like performing miracles. You know what I mean? Like 
He throws a sword and comes back to him. Yeah, he does do that. But you can you could throw that with that hyper reflex stuff like Captain America shit. You know, like sure, he can calculate where that's going and what. Like you know, calculate the the wind speed so that if I throw it this direction, the wind will catch it and it'll spin. Right, and come exactly. Back to that crazy bullshit. This is yeah. physics. It's not physics gonna defying like sorcery. Twenty just, pound sword. Yeah. Though. No, like unless you're in a fucking hurricane, the sword's <laughs> yeah. not coming back to you. It's at least huge. the shield. At least Captain America's shield is kind of aerodynamic. When it's supposed like, to a wind could, oh. it's yeah. 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 That's the point. Like the sword is not meant to like. Or, yeah. Sorry. What's the bouncy metal on the outside of it? I never remember. What? He's talking about vibranium? The shield's, no, the shield's vibranium, but it has a coating of, like, didn't we talk about this? Am I getting... Oh, doesn't right, it around the, the range has something else on it. Be, right, because if, exactly just technically, is. somebody realized later on, it was like, if a shield is actually made of vibranium, which absorbs 100% of all energy, it should never bounce off of anything. It hits it, stops It should falls. hit and immediately just <laughs> yeah. fall. Yeah. And then rubber. <laughs> it's not rubber. It's rubber. I, I think it actually metal. might be some like rub, like weird rubber alloy, if that's even a thing. Rubber yeah, alloy? No, it's, it's a different metal. I remember it's a different metal. Anyway, no, no, I don't remember. Um, <laughs> it's been 20 years since we've had Captain America in a death it's battle. Been a so, right, 30 years. Um, it's been 50 years. 57 years and a half. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's wrap this episode up. Sure. Yeah, yeah. We can talk. We can tell more <laughs> yeah. stories in well, Sudden We've death. got more that we can talk about on Sudden Death. Uh, thank you guys for joining us for another episode. Thanks. Again, Go to the Death Battle Twitter to vote on your pick for the winner of the first episode of the new DBX airs this weekend. It's going to be awesome. Um, thank you, Genevieve, for thank joining you for us. Having yeah. me. Um, hope you can stick around for sudden death. Definitely yeah. not. No, I'll, I'll stay. All right, <laughs> cool. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>